Hi, welcome to Wednesday Thoughts from down at the cabin. This is Season 1, Episode 1. Now what I want to talk today about is having traditional family values and have they gone forever in 2020? Or will they return? That's the question, will they return? Now, I remember as a kid, the family values we had was we were brought up with honesty trust and when we made a promise we kept it I always remember going back a step now when I was uh, little and we say about honesty we never lied to our parents you see now with all the young ones today the, the mothers or the fathers they'll say you know did you do such a thing and they say no 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 it weren't me it weren't me it weren't me and the parents know that them kids are lying they know they're lying to the face but they don't say nothing, but in like our day, there's a lot of you will be watching this, knows in our day, we were terrified to tell if we told a lie to our parents, we'd get grounded to get a white wit slipper, I must admit, and it was like a clog these slippers. And one of these slippers my dad got from Tip, which I've talked about before, when me and my dad used to cut at Tip, get rid of my mum's rubbish, and my dad would come back with even more crap. He actually came back with an old pair of clogs for my mother. From tip, it's true this, true story that. I mean, well, I kept one outside at bed, and if I were a bad one, then I'd get a belt weight, weight clog, and I used to blame my dad every time I got that. It's true that. And like honesty, never telling a lie, and I also remember when my dad used me. Dad used to be a builder on the building sites, and on a Friday he'd get his wage. And he'd come home with his wage and he'd give it to my mum and my mum would open it up and give him a few pound back or like a five or a ten back, which were a lot of money back then. And then my dad would use that all week if he wanted to get bits and bats or do something. And sometimes he didn't ask for anything or to get anything back. He used to just keep it all in family pot and then my mother would look after all the money and she'd go shopping on a Saturday and I remember the first supermarkets that used to open when I were a kid. And the only supermarket in Bolton we had were the old co-op. Now a lot of you remember this. In the old days you got co-op and then the, the till, as, you were, as it were ringing through all the things you were buying, it would print these stamps off. And now I can't quite remember. I just seem to think the stamps were like a blue colour. Now if I've got that wrong, please correct me. Put it in the comments below and uh, so people can see that I did get it wrong because I just seem to think they were blue and it, they would reel all these off and then there'd be like these little books at the side that you could have as many as you want, you get the books and then you lick the stamps, stick the stamps in these books and then the next time you come in you'd hand a book of stamps over. Uh, it's not like these post office stamps where it's a little cardboard thing, these were like a proper booklet about this big they was and then they'd be full of stamps both sides uh, you'd hand it in you get so much back but because we were we weren't a massive family we're the average family but we did eat a lot to be fair as kids uh, we was very lucky that way we really was and mm -hmm. um, my mother used to go back with like two and three books and I always remember as we were paying all these stamps of pumping out like mad mm -hmm. they were quite funny to to be there really uh, and I always remember, like, the supermarkets, they weren't like they are now, like the, like Morrison's or Asda's. They were nothing that type of size. They was roughly the size of, like, what farm foods are now, the average farm foods. That was like a supermarket. That was the biggest there were. And like I say, from, from what I can remember, there was only the co-op and then there were corner shops. Every street had a, had a, literally had a corner shop. And it was always open on a Sunday, and nine times out of ten, you, your mother would send you out and say, here's 50p, go and get some gravy, you know, and you'd go to the shop, at Toppet Street Corner Shop, you'd go in, and they never used to have, like, if you go in a shop now, you can have, like, 10 or 15 different kinds, they can be, different gravies you can get, 
like in the old days there was only really oxos and uh, bisto that was about it they did have all these big choices of things like they have now and uh, you'd get the gravy come back and she'd make the gravy and if you were lucky she'd give you 50p to buy a, a big bottle of lemonade or orange or cherry aid cherry aid worked best uh, dandelion and burdock hey that's going back fizzy orange what else were there uh, traditional lemonade and things like that because remember, when we were little, if you bought a bottle of lemonade, it weren't clear lemonade like you buy now. It was like a cloudy lemonade, weren't it? The old traditional lemonade, like a cloudy colour. I can remember that. God, that's going back. And then you'd have your Sunday dinner. Uh, we all sat round the table as a family and had the Sunday dinner. And then me and my dad would go in the kitchen afterwards and wash it up. I mean, we would get every pan out when she were cooking. So that, and then we did washing up, and then my dad would give me like 30p or 20p if I was lucky. And uh, we would, I would go across the road to the shop, and I could get like a 10p mix or a 20p mix, and that. You have a little bag with these sweets in. I used to come with me. She used to hold me hand across it road. Oh, it's a guy, I just remember that. And then we'd be sat there and I'd say, I'll swap, I'll swap you this one for that one, Julie. <laughs> we'd swap sweets around. Uh, there were no game systems like there is now, where in the afternoon they'd go on the game system, there were nothing. They didn't even have the Atari out when I were a kid, the Spectrum, Amstrad, none of that was out at that time. And then on a Saturday night, me and our Julie, I think it was a third, actually, I think it was a Thursday or a Friday. We used to watch Top of the Pops. That were good. Uh, we used to sit around and watch as a family Top of the Pops. And I tell you what I remember why I'm saying Saturday. I think Saturday Radio 1 used to play the top 10 or the top 40 songs. And what me and our Julie used to do, we used to go in the bedroom when it came on the radio. Because remember, the, there were not these like little radios like now. They used to, all radios were like these big ghetto blasters. And what we used to do is we, we used to put a cassette in, push it in, and then what we'd do is we would press a record button, play and record, because you had to press play, play and record button down, and would record all of that, to, all of the top 40. That way on a Saturday, I'm sure it was on a Saturday, he was come on Radio 1. And then I always remember on the Sunday, after we'd had the dinner, got the sweets, done the washing up and all that, me and our Julia would go upstairs and we used to edit it. So we'd get the second cassette, because it was always a double cassette, and then we'd edit off the first tape from, from the Saturday. So we'd take all the bits out where they're talking. And that way we, always, that way we had a cassette with all the top 40 all the time. And then you'd have to fast forward, play, and then rewind, fast forward, and all stuff like that you had to do to listen to it. Because like, we had no money for records, and there were no CDs out then in old days. And it was only like, cassettes would be a fortune, like £10 you'd pay for a, a cassette. Oh you know, God, it's going by that, I used to love that. And we used to listen to records as well, up wireless, eh? a record player and all that. I mean, my granny, my Auntie Alice, who he's called granny, she used to have the old gramophone that you wound up like, that's true, that, that is true. That is true, that she had the old gramophone, I can remember that. Uh, memory Auntie Florence. Always remember going to me, Auntie Florence's, because, like, people dismay what, dismiss what I say when I say this. She had this big old-fashioned hi-fi system, it was like in a wooden cabinet, and it must have had 20 or 30 different band whips in from around the world. Now, when I've told people this, they've gone, nah, it's not right, nah, nah, that's not right. But honestly, it did. I always remember it. And then you tune the dial all the way down this list, and it would have all the, all the channels and the names of the countries on. And I don't know how it picked them up, but it always picked up all these channels. And then I remember going to her, I think it was a Wednesday after school, I would go to my Auntie Florence's for tea. Uh, and uh, I always remember it was sat there. And I, 
with a plate and I need, I need me an anti-flooring and she had glass plates do you remember when the glass plates come out and we're eating glass plate and she'd have the telly on and it used to be a telly that she rented from Radio Rentals and you had to put a 50p in the back and you'd be watching it and it'd go Doom! flies go off and she'd say oh no so she'd go in her pocket get a 50p dropping it back you used to be like that noise and it'd come back on five minutes later true story boom everything would go off and she'd say oh I've not got another 50p and I said what's up what's up for well it's for a meter because in the old days you used to put 50p in the meter now we was very very lucky when we grew up we didn't have a we didn't have a 50p meter your mum just paid the bill when it come which was very unusual at our time and the anti used to go to the shop get change come back and put a 50p in the meat, everything had come back on and whatever program you're watching had finished and done. So that that was going back in the old days. And like like I say, we always used to sit around the table and then on, on a Saturday night, we always used to watch uh, the Boswell's bread. We used to love that. With Joey and Shifty and Roxy and Lilo Lil. Eh, that's going back, in it? Nelly Boswell. And then I'd go in the other room and watch Minder with Stuart, because our Stuart used to love watching Minder. And then you'd go back in the front room again, and then you'd watch Dallas, because my mum and dad used to watch Dallas. We Oh, I used to love Dallas with JR. Everyone used to love JR. Everybody wanted to be JR, didn't they? Always, we used to play at school and that in playground. We used to play Dallas. And we used, to, uh, we used to pretend we were all these characters at our Dallas. True story, that we did. This is primary school, just bear in mind, we're talking primary school here. We're not talking 16 at 15, 16 at school, pretending you're JR. So, but yeah, and we used to go, I think it was on a Wednesday night, Thursday night, we used to go around to my Auntie Alice's. Uh, and when we got there, my mother would go straight into the kitchen, put kettle on, and she'd unpack all the shopping and put it in the cupboards for me Auntie Alice. And I'd have, my job was to go in the front room, and I I played dominoes with me Auntie Alice. And me Auntie Alice used to wear glasses, and she used to be there looking at numbers on don, dominoes. And then we used to play dominoes, and then she'd go in the kitchen and come back with all these buns. And she had, do you remember the old fashioned cake stands with like two, three tier? Well, she put all these buns on. And when I was born, I was born hyperactive, which I was. I, when I was a baby, apparently I didn't breathe for so long and it affected me and it made me hyperactive. I was very hyperactive at school. I was bouncing off walls, to be honest. Uh, it was nothing I could have done. It was just the way my brain were fired out, firing around all the time. So, uh, I couldn't have a lot of these sweet stuff and things like that, all the ease and all this. I had to go on a special diet to help me keep me calm and stuff. And uh, my auntie always would say, Heather, which was me, wasn't it? Heather, I want to hire you in to have a bun. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 Alice, uh, she, he, he, uh, he can't have a bun because he can't have, oh, I'd, I'd like him just to have one. And I like, drooling thinking I'm going to get one of her buns my auntie Alice made the best buns in the world so my mum said yeah, yeah go on you can have one. only one Ian yeah. like this eating the bun and my auntie Alice knew I loved her but eating her buns they were the best in the world and then as soon as I'd done it I'd wrap up the little uh, paper used like a paper went round them put it on things and sit down and I used to keep my body as still as I could. And then I'd her say, would you like another bunny in? And we'll say, no, 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 you can't have another. No, you you know, we can't have two, Alice. Ah, but I want him to have two, because I made him especially for him. I made him a little Eccles cake. And she made, like if you go to the shop, you get these quite big Eccles cakes, because when we were growing up, they used to have the big Eccles cakes, like our Stuart made at shop. Well, my Auntie Alice made these really button small size ones. They were really nice. And she put butter on it. I always remember she put butter on. 
and uh, she said well I'd like him to have uh, a little echo scare together and she, she'll say ah, go on then he can have it <laughs> it's been there like that and eating it away I'll butter all over my mouth and uh, oh ah, yeah yeah but all that all them little values and all them things as a family structure we did have gone they've all gone like sitting around the table on a Sunday as a family and eating a meal we always sat at the table eating our breakfast we'd get up early and my mum would do us a cup breakfast before we went to school or if she were busy at shop then our Julie would get the cereal for me she'd make toast for me make a proper breakfast the kids don't have that now you know and I know the family structures can be different with work commitments but I tell you now, people say, oh, well, I work hard, I'm in an office, blah, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm worked off my feet. Please don't take this the wrong way, but compared to what our parents did when we were, when we were little, they, the way of life was a lot, lot harder than what it is now. I always remember my dad, he was working on the building sites all day, and he'd come home, and he were tired and my mum my mum had a phase where she made ash all the time and the thing my dad ate it was a salad she was always making salads he used to go crack as if he got a salad and she had a phase where she made cabbage soup a bastard remembers that <gasps> cabbage soup boy it was rancid and she used to make that come on down we'll have some cabbage soup and you think oh Jesus Christ oh we hated it and then like my dad would work Monday to Friday on the building sites sometimes he'd work on a Saturday but if he didn't work Saturday on a Saturday and a Sunday he used to do jobs for people on the street on the on neighbouring streets building work and that he never had a day off my dad doing some very rare he got a Saturday or a Sunday off he was always doing building work for the neighbours and stuff like that to bring extra money in. And we always went away uh, once a year up to the Log Cabin Hotel at Scotland, at Kirk Michael, up in the hills. Fantastic holidays we used to have there, pool table and everything like that. It weren't like now where you're going to, in a hotel and you put it like, like now, I think you put two pound or a pound into the pool table to play pool back then it were free you didn't pay for anything they all used to just have the little bags on the side with the rolling trays you just took them all out put them on never never cost out and then later in the years it, it went to 20p i think you had to put 20p in because i think what it was if if my memory's right you used to put the old two 10ps in the old 10ps i still remember as well you put two 10ps in and then later in later on it went to a 20p that went in and then i think it was actually a 20 and a 10 it went up to then 50p and i think it's a pound it was a pound and it could even be two pound now in a pool table in a pub i can remember that i stand corrected if i'm wrong so but like i always remember my dad coming home and he gave my mum the wage packet every time uh, and then I remember my uncle coming round on a Saturday and he'd say Heather I'm because uh, my mother would call Heather Heather I'm taking Ari in to Polish club and we used and she always came out and said I don't like him having a drink you know and um, I just want him to have one pint or a shandy that'd be better a shandy and my uncle Dick would go aye 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 I'll get him a shandy don't worry we're getting car, we'll be driving to Polish Club. And I'd say, uh, Uncle Dick, he'd say, I, I'm not really going to have a shandy, am I? He said, Don't be so daft, man, you're not having a shandy. But remember, I'm driving, so we're only having one pint, you know that, don't you? Because there were no, don't take this wrong when I say this, but there were no drink driving laws back then or anything like that. People used to drink drive before all the regulations come, but my Uncle Dick never did anything like that. He would only have, if he were driving, he had one pint, and that's before all these laws come out now where you can only have a pint or two pints. 
so we'd go there and we'd sit there and he'd say, what you been doing? You've been down at shop with our Stuart and everything. I used to, and then I used to spend a lot of time with my Uncle Dick. I used to go to his house and that, and, and we used to do jobs and everything. And I always remember when I were, when I were really young, I, uh, Patrick, if he's watching this, he'll say hi, all right. But I used to be very thin because I've got quite a lot of weight to me now. And I used to be very, very thin. And my trousers always used to fall down. And my mum used to, do you remember in the old days where your mother had put a tuck in your trousers? So we're tucking, do you remember that? And even with a tuck, they just fall down all the time. So I always remember every few, every couple of years, Uncle Dick could buy a belt for me, a leather belt. And he used to do the, uh, what do they call it now? Where they had them pun, like puncher things and they used to get the hammer and, and used to like do artwork on it and stuff. I'm really sorry, I can't think of the word they call it now. But he used to do all stuff like that. And he used to sign it off as Uncle Dick or something like that. On the, on the inside he'd say that typed in, well tapped in if you know what I mean. I miss my Uncle Dick. I have a lot of good memories about my Uncle Dick. He was good to me. And, uh, yeah, he was really good to me. And my Auntie Mary, I used to love my Auntie Mary. And you'd go around. And um, he used to swear my Auntie Mary. True story, this, right? She used to swear. And whenever my mother would come round, she'd never, ever, ever swear. And I always remember, she was a Catholic Auntie Mary. Mm -hmm. And we were brought up to her England. And uh, I always remember saying to her, Auntie Mary, why do you never swear when my mother's here? And she said, she said, oh, I know, I know in my heart if I ever swore in conversation when your mother was here, that I'd go to hell. I know that I'd go to hell. Mm -hmm. And I can't do it, she says. I can't do it. Because my mother would never swear. And if any, any of us ever said a swear word or anything, bang, we're going to crack. It had. I always remember that. And the nearest thing to my mother swearing, and to her that was swearing, she always said, damn or bloody hell. Right? True of that. And I remember going back, ooh, 20, well, it'd be about 20 years ago. I always remember once my mum had a caravan at Blackpool, all family did. Uh, me and Tracy, my wife, we went to, well, ex wife went to Blackpool and we went to the caravan and I went, uh, oh, well, something happened and I went, oh, God. i never forget it. My mother said to me, Ian, I don't want you to take the Lord's name in vain. And I'll never forget that. She said that and she meant it when she said it. She meant it, but she, but she came from a very, very religious family. Like my granddad, what do they call it now? Like the groundsman for the church. I mean, Grandad always dug all the graves. Because remember in the old days, when somebody died and they dug a grave, it used to be seven deep. He always used to dig a seven deep grave. And it were all done by hand. And it was only one man that used to do it. They weren't like a team doing it. There were no diggers or nothing. And during the war, my granddad, uh, he'd dig like two or three graves in a day. I always remember, I always remember my mother telling me that. And uh, they always, my grandma and granddad always used to go to the church and my mum were part of church and everything. In fact, when we were growing up, we were part of church, all of us. Mm. And we used to ring, uh, go up into the top of the church and we'd ring the bells on a Sunday. Oh, I used to love ringing, doing that mm. bell ringing. It was brilliant, that. That was the best thing in the world. Mm. And uh, you, you had to be asked to do that, you know. It weren't something that, oh, I'll go up and do it. And then they used to do classes in an evening part of church that you could do bell ringing, which I always wanted to do. But I, for some reason, I never did it. And then, like I said, we always went to church on a Sunday. Uh, we're always last in church, always late, because my mother were late for everything. We were late for absolutely everything in life with my mum. And... Um, yeah, so we used to go to church and everything. We always part at church. And then I used to go to the youth part of the church and everything. Um, yeah, that would go. Yeah, I've got a lot of fond memories of church and growing up. But everything I've talked about are the old ways and the old values as a family. 
and it really has gone all of it and it's heartbreaking really when you look it's like now chances are there's a lot of families out there that they come home from work especially estate families i don't mean no disrespect to some of them you're not all the same then they'll come home and half the time they don't know where the kids are when they're playing out they haven't got a clue it's like when we were a kid my mother always knew that I was at my uh, my cousin's houses playing out in the gardens or we used to go and play at relatives houses and friends at schools houses we didn't roam around or out like that there's kids now at six and seven year old playing on playing on the streets well the streets aren't safe they're not safe now but the parents don't care when we were kids the streets were safe it weren't like there is like with paedophiles, which I suppose in the old days there was then. But the, there were none of that when we were kids. It was safe. You know, I always remember. We used to play on the old bikes on on old uh, mills, in the old mills when they'd shut down. So when they stripped them and that, we used to go on them on the night and we used to drive round on the inside, well, drive, pedal round on the inside and play in them. You know, we used to love all that, all the old mills. It was great. So, well, that's about it for today. Uh, I'll see you again next week, next Wednesday, and we'll have a natter about something else.